presentation today is entitled Finding Your College Fit, a Case Study. Our presenter will be Gregson Rowe. And the abstract that was submitted for this presentation is the Excellence in College Admissions Preparation Boot Camp is a research project that enables adolescent students to find the colleges that best fit their needs. As a result, one alumna of the program has decided to make her home at Hood College. Her survey responses and experiences will be explored in this session. So with that, I will hand it over to our next session presenter, Gregson Rowe. Hi everyone, um, my name is Grayson Rao. Um, I'm a junior and a psychology and Spanish major. Um, I'm trying to share my screen here, but um, it's like it's not enabled yet. Okay, let me bear with us a second while we get our technology together. Okay. Here we go. All right, so good morning again. Um, today I'll be sharing my experience from my summer research institute experience with my advisor, Dr. Diane Graves and her program entitled ECAP, Excellence in College Admissions Preparation. So to aid me in my attempt to show you what we do in the program, I'll be presenting the experience of one alumnus from the ECAP program, who we will be calling Matthew. Um, he participated in the program in the summer of 2019, and when he first arrived to ECAP, he was feeling excited about the process, but reported that he didn't feel informed enough on financial aid awards and considered costs to be a very important factor. He had very insortive, but perhaps overly involved parents and struggled with finding balance in his life between schoolwork, extracurriculars, applying for college, and finding time to sleep. So with that said, what is ECAP? ECAP is a three-day intensive boot camp whose main goal is to provide information on the college admissions and college search process. High school students and their families often see the college admissions process and selection committees as mysterious, all-knowing power, similar to the idea of the ominous wizard from The Wizard of Oz. However, with the right tools and skills, we help these students pull back the curtain on the college admissions process in order to find out what school will actually work for them. This is essential due to the ever-changing state of college admissions, especially amidst COVID-19. So to touch on what the college admissions um, state is like now, um, Ivy League schools are seeing a rise in applications due to the waiving of SAT and ACT scores in light of COVID-19 but the majority of college admissions has been negatively impacted by the pandemic, just like almost everything else. Um, the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center has found that for the majority of colleges and universities, the number of um, first-time freshmen has declined by 13% in comparison to last fall, especially among Black, Hispanic, and Native American students. Additionally, fewer students are completing the FAFSA nationally, especially those from Title I schools, which are down 13%, and schools with high minority populations, which are down 15%. And although the IVs are reaching a wider range of populations by becoming test blind, that doesn't mean that the more prestigious schools are more likely to satisfy their students. A study by the Stanford University Graduate School concluded that the selectivity rate of a college has no relationship with student learning, job satisfaction, or well being. In reality, college fitness needs to be determined on an individual, personalized level, and there's no one size fits all formula. ECAP has recognized this disparity between good colleges and colleges, or quotation, good colleges, and colleges where students will actually thrive as individuals. And we have implemented many different activities over the course of the camp that cater to the needs of the students as a person and not as a statistic. So the boot camp itself lasts for three consecutive days and has been held on different parts of campus up until last summer, where we held it virtually on Zoom. And in the weeks leading up to ECAP, you can see the research team is busy assemb assembling the master binders that have all of the information they need for camp. And this includes surveys, activities, and informative handouts that our different presenters will be using. And then for who joins the camp, um, it's mostly made up of rising sophomores, juniors, and seniors, though the camp is best suited for rising juniors. And because it's capped at 20 students and then subdivided into color teams led by research assistants such as myself, the needs of all three groups can be addressed. And the majority of attendees are from Frederick County, but the virtual format last year allowed for us to have some participants from North Carolina and Georgia as well. 
So on day one, as students begin to enter, they fill out their first survey, which asks them about their feelings toward the college application process prior to beginning ECAP. And this includes items such as how empowered do you feel by the process, how important is financial aid, how important is geographical location, et cetera. And students also self-score survey on what is important to both them as a person and to them as a college student in order to begin this process of self-discovery. So this whole first half hour and a half of introspection is guided by a clinical psychologist and begins the process of taking charge of your search. And in the photo, you can see the students participating in an activity that's all about going the extra mile. So after being challenged to stick a post-it note on the wall as high as they can, they are then challenged to get it even higher. And at this point, students will get creative by staying on shares and even using each other for support. And this is all a metaphor for pushing yourself past your initial expectations and stepping outside the box to get a leg up on your college search process and your self-discovery process. And a very important part of the camp is actually the lunches we provide and snacks. We try to make it a really relaxed and welcoming environment with personalized lunches in them from Chipotle or Subway or wherever. And we encourage students to get up for coffee and tea breaks and to just keep things really casual. And even for our virtual session, we took a survey on all their favorite snacks and put them in a box, sending it along with their binder to them. And a big draw to the camp is the essay writing process led by um, Jo Ellen Smallwood um, with the green box around her on the Zoom screen there. And the goal is not to have a perfect essay, but to overcome the anxiety or mental block about the essay. So we also have students write their feelings toward the college essay pre-camp and post-camp to compare their responses. And at the end of day one, we have an evening session with the parents, which is all about establishing healthy boundaries with your students, being honest about financial aid, and making their goal to empower their students and produce use stress rather than distress towards the college search process. And on day two, we discuss the difference between the SAT and ACT and whether you should submit your scores to help you or if it could hurt you and the test blind and all the different options that schools have nowadays. And we also have a talk about athletics and health and wellness from one of our guest speakers. And then Joe Ellen takes them through the first draft of their essay where they turn off their monitors and just continuously type whatever comes to mind with their prompt. And this helps students avoid over editing as they go, because the big problem that students have is they want to get it out perfectly or not get it out at all. And then we end the day with mock interviews and with each other where they can record themselves and then analyze their strengths and weaknesses. And we talk about important parts of preparing for a college interview, like learning information about the college you're actually interviewing for and etiquette over email and in person. And on day three, we do a really popular activity led by one of our directors, Cheryl, and she brings in transcripts from various different students. And then we have um, small groups become the college admissions committee and decide who they're going to let into the school. In the end, she reveals that all of them actually got into the school and that just the surface judgment isn't enough to know um, how qualified that student is to go to school. Just because they only worked a part-time job and struggled in school doesn't mean that they're going to perform better or worse in college than someone with a ton on their resume. And then we end the day with a campus tour and closing ceremonies. So the campus tour teaches them what to look out for and what kind of questions to ask. We usually do it on the Hood College campus as well. And we encourage them to talk to the actual students and try to go on a normal day of classes. And we end with a cake that is decorated with their favorite college that they researched during their time at ECAP. And then in January, we invite them back for a booster session just to um, touch base with where they're at and give them update information. And then we had some comments from them about how ECAP benefited them. They really enjoyed the essay writing and the SAT and Common App strategies. And most importantly, it just puts them to on the right foot of beginning their college search process. And as for Matthew, after completing ECAP, he remained excited about the process and feels very informed on financial awards and the role of costs in his final decision. His parents are still involved, but have learned to let Matthew take the reins on his college search. He also feels much better about his balance between schoolwork, extracurriculars, applying for college, and even has enough time to sleep. 
While ECAP does not pro promote any certain school, we are proud to share that he has chosen Hood College as his perfect fit. And with that, I'll open up to any questions. Thank you so much. It sounds like a phenomenal program and that uh, the students uh, really, truly benefit from it. So uh, with that, if you have questions for our presenter, uh, please type them into the chat and we're happy to pass them along to her. Well, it looks like we don't have any questions at this point. Is there any one thing that you would say that if somebody else wanted to get involved in the implementation or the research involved in this project, how, how might they do that? Um, so the biggest thing is, um, I began this with my connection with my advisor, Dr. Graves. So the biggest thing is finding a faculty mentor who matches your research interests and they're always going to be working on something and most professors are glad to have students who are interested in the research as well. So definitely establishing connections with faculty is super important. Yeah, and then as you explore different things that you might research, what led you to this particular uh, experience? So this experience was something that my advisor had done um, before I was even at Hood, when, back when I was still in middle school. So it was re I was really introduced to it through her. But with that, I've been able to add my own twist on it and look at some of the cultural impacts for the students. And we, one of my um, fellow research assistants focused on the athletic side of things. So each student gets to bring in their own twist and scope on how they want to view the camp. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your presentation today. And I hope others are inspired to look into these kinds of uh, supportive programs for youth that will bring them to a college experience. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it's time for